Hi, everybody. Today, the video will be focused on um, complex exponential Fourier series. It's another form of Fourier series. Last time, uh, we used to uh, apply uh, trigonometric Fourier series. Here you see, I mean, the equation of front view, it's a very simple equation. The one to the left here, you will find the textbook that you'll uh, only have one summation from minus infinity to infinity CK uh, exponential function of J in omega naught T. But in this uh, one, I just modify it a little bit and I have C naught separated from the rest of the series uh, to make it easy and simple. And I want to explain in one example how we'll do that. How to find C naught, the coefficient C naught and the coefficient CK here to the right. It's again integration over one period, but you observe here that the CM, uh, when you integrate it different than trigonometric, you don't multiply the function x of t by sine or cosine, because you have only one term here, so you multiply it by exponential function e power minus j in omega naught t, dt, okay? So let's uh, solve an example, and I pick one example different than the one in the handout, so we'll have extra solved example to uh, review and check. One, the, the, the function that I'm going to use here in the example, um, it would be like a square wave. And from zero, from zero to pi, it will be equal to one. And from pi to two pi, it's equal to zero. And then start to repeat again. So from minus pi, to zero would be zero and it would be and uh, um, like that. That's the I mean function. I mean, let's just uh, have an uh, y axis here and call this function, for example, x of t and that's t. And it's required to uh, find the Fourier series of this function. And I'm going to use the complex exponential Fourier series. And maybe it'd be a good exercise to do uh, to do it and also do it using trigonometric for you series to check your answer. That would be a good revision for you. Okay, so what should we do as we go step by step? Like the last time, we should find the period. So the period here from zero to two pi, to be every two pi. So we'll say that the t is equal to two pi. Always you do that, the first thing. Once you find t, find omega naught. Omega naught is the fundamental frequency and the definition of omega naughts equal two pi over t. By the way, you can call this one t naught or t. I mean, it, it doesn't really make difference. It just depends that you are using the fundamental frequency. That's all what matter. So it's equal to two pi divided by the t naught or t. It's two pi, so is equal one radian per second. So that's your um, uh, omega naught. Once you find these two things, and then you start to find the first, the coefficients. The coefficient, I, I separate them, C naught and CK. Both are just one. So C naught, which is uh, the coefficient when K equals zero, the definition of C naught, as let me just show you, it's equal to the integration of the function itself and divided by the period. So one over T, and T here will be equal to two pi, the integration over uh, one pi, so I'll say um, over one period. So the period here, I mean, you, you can say it, I mean, from zero to two pi, that's okay. Um, so from zero to two pi, but from zero to pi is equal one, from pi to two pi is equal zero. So you can say it from zero to pi, and the function is equal to one. And just integrate it, you will find one over two pi. Integration of one is equal t the limit of integration from zero to pi. So it will equal one, two pi times uh, pi minus zero, which is equal to pi. So cancel pi was pi, so is equal one half. So that's the constant term, which known as a DC component of the uh, function. Set. And now we'll find the, uh, the coefficient CK, and we just let's look at CK or CM, doesn't matter. If you use k or n, doesn't matter, but you know that will be like an integer, start from uh, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So 
CK, 1 over T, let me just write the expression here. So 1 over T, the integration over one period, X of T, uh, multiplied by E minus J N omega naught T DT. All right, uh, let's, and, and we have to know that K now is not started from zero. I already found C, uh, no. so we'll have uh, start from one, two, three, and so on. Well, T is equal to two pi, so I will say one over two pi, and the integration should be from zero to two pi two. But as you know, it's only from zero to pi because pi to pi is equal zero, so I'll say from zero to pi, and x of t is equal one, and now I multiply by e minus j n, and omega naught is equal one, so it will be n t dt. Okay. Now you integrate this function, and you will have one over t. The integration will be e power minus j n t divided by minus j n, and the limit will be from zero to pi. Well, uh, this is the minus, if you want to get rid of the minus, <coughs> excuse me. So you can change the, the, the limit of integration, you switch zero and pi. So you'll say one over j two n pi, they are constant, right? I take them outside here, and then I will just substitute by e minus j n t, and now I will have zero pi, I flip them, because that I, I delete the negative sign. Now we'll substitute to be equal one over two j o two n pi, and uh, it would uh, t equal zero, and then minus e minus j n pi. E power, uh, e power zero here is equal one, so you can write is equal to one over j to n pi, one minus e minus j n pi. So that's what we, we got uh, uh, from the integration and that's the, um, uh, what we know. So, I mean, now let's just uh, try to find what is e power minus j n pi, I explain that in previous uh, video, we said that uh, e to the power of j theta or minus j theta is equal to cosine theta minus j sine theta. So uh, our theta here is equal to uh, n pi. So we just put n pi j n pi, so you have cosine n pi minus j sine n pi. Also explain that uh, when n is integral, like one, two, three, four, it means you have sine pi, sine two pi, sine three pi, all these values equal zero for n equal integral. So that would be simplified to cosine n pi. So now I'm going to replace this term by cosine and by. Uh, just let me check. And so C n will be equal one over j two n pi one minus cosine n pi. All right. We can go also and for cosine n pi. In the same previous uh, video, we we found num uh, the value for cosine n pi. N could be even, could be odd. Um, so if it's even like uh, two, you have cosine two pi, that's even, that will give you two, one. But when you have it odd, like cosine pi or three pi, that will equal to negative one. So we know that cosine in pi is equal to, it's either plus one or minus one, plus one when it's um, uh, even, and minus one when it's odd n. So when you have it even, uh, uh, you, will, you, will, you will have a plus one, all right? So you put plus one here, you will get one minus one, zero. So it'll be zero. So Cn will be equal zero when n is even. 
But to win n uh, is odd, it equal negative one. When you plug it here, negative one times negative will be plus, will be two, and the two in the top cancel this two in the bottom. So the answer will be one over j m pi. One over j m pi. That's when n is odd. So simply, you can say that cn is equal 1 over j n pi, where n is equal to 2, 4, 6, and so on here. here. Oh, I'm sorry, odd. I did a mistake here. And odd is like 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. All right. So that's cn. Now I want to uh, express the Fourier series in the complex Exponential form, it's at C naught plus CK. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm having a cold little bit. CK EG and omega T from in my all right. So just let's write the equivalent expression now for X of T. All right. So we have X of T will be equal to uh, C naught. Oh, I'd like to write the exception again here. C naught plus sigma n from minus infinity to infinity, but don't take n equals zero because we're already done with C naught. C n e to the power of positive g. Uh, observe the difference, you know, it's positive when you put it here, but negative when you find the coefficient. Let me show you, I mean, the difference, that's interesting. That's the coefficient with minus g n, but, but when you put in the C, it's about plus g. Okay, that's one difference. So j n omega naught t. Now c naught it's equal to half, and that's our sigma n not equal zero, and, and n also is odd. C n we got it one over j n by. That's here in front of us here. Uh, e power j n and omega naught is equal to one. We found that uh, t. So I can take whatever constant does not depend on n j by and n stay inside. So I'll say is equal to one over j pi sigma n equal not equal zero. <coughs> n in equal minus infinity to infinity, n not equal zero, and it's all. Uh, what's left to one over n e power j n t. That's the exhibition here. We found the solution, but maybe can be simplified more. Once you have this term, we uh, I think I mean also in, in previous uh, video we found a formula of the sum of e power j theta, and you can review the video, it's very important, that's a video. Uh, we found out that uh, sigma sine in theta, uh, when n start from one up to infinity, we'll prove that, it's equal to one over two j sigma n from minus infinity to infinity and n not equal zero e to the power j n theta that was i mean proven in the previous uh, video i'm going to use it from this expression you can say this part e j n theta the summation is equal to 2j times that sigma from n1 infinity. This is, I mean, the same thing. Uh, sine n theta. Observe that this term the, uh, to the left, e, uh, the sigma e bar j n theta is the same as this one, except only is divided by n. So if you divide it by n, you can divide it by n, right? All right, so let's just do that. So I will replace this term by this term in the equation that we have in the top there. So x of t will be equal one half 
plus I have to look at it. One over j pi, one over j pi times the sigma uh, e bar j theta over n. This is the same thing like with this one in front of me, but just instead of n theta will be uh, n, uh, I think n t. Yes, n t. All right. All right. So I'll do that. It's equal to 2j. That's the 2j. And uh, sigma from n equal 1 to infinity sine n t over n. And j go with j, so you have 2 over pi. So it's equal, so in the end, that's, I mean, the, the, the last thing. 1 over 2 plus 1 over pi, I'm sorry, I have 2 here. So 2 over pi, sigma, and n start from 1 to infinity, sine nt over n. Very simple. Now, after simplification. Let's see what does it mean. These are the components of the square function x of t. I will out take just the first three term, like uh, when n equal one, two, three, just having to get feeling of what the function look like. So I'll say x of t is equal to one half plus two over pi. And then I substitute, remember only are taking the odd number. So n equal one, you will have sine t over one plus two over pi, and then you have n equal three, just put it there, sine three t. And five will be two over five pi, it's just a bit very simple, now we can just complete. And they make just dot, that's it. So it consists of DC component equal to one half, and then you have the fundamental component, the, where is omega naught equal to one, the amplitude is equal to two over pi, then the third harmonic, or third, uh, yes, it's two over three pi, so it's like one third, the amplitude is, 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 is smaller than the first one divided by three, the frequency is higher. And then, the, and you go to the fifth one, it's the fifth of the uh, amplitude of the fundamental, but the frequency, so I mean, the frequency is increasing and the amplitude of each harmonic is decreasing, getting smaller. So that's, I mean, the way that you solve it. It's really simple if you follow all the steps and you know and you review the previous uh, video. Now, how to represent the, uh, the amplitude of each component I just mentioned now, we call it line spectra, and that will be the topic of the next video. And I hope that we can meet again. Thank you very much.